What is up everybody, welcome back to today's video on Vital Linux. Now, if you've seen my channel, recently you know that the number one video on my channel, number one most viewed video, as of the time of recording this video, is the top five GNOME Shell themes. You should definitely check that video out, it's up here. And I'm going to do a follow-up to that video, and this one is going to be about the top seven GNOME Shell extensions. Now, note that this list is in no particular order. Some of the extensions improve the workflow, while some of them improve the visual appearance. But you should see an overall productivity boost. Now, all the links to the extensions, as well as the timestamps, are down there in the description, so if you want to check them out, make sure to look down there. So, without further ado, let's get started with the video. So, all the extensions that I'm going to show in this video are available at extensions.gnome.org, but for that website to actually install them to your computer, you're going to need an extension. Now, this extension doesn't work too well on Chrome and Chromium, but it works excellently on Firefox. So I recommend opening up Mozilla Firefox right here. Just click on that. And go to the URL extensions.gnome.org. So here is the shell extensions page right here. And you see a purple or blue box here asking you to click here to install browser extension. So click on that link right there. And you'll have this prompt right here. So make sure to click allow. And it should download and verify that add-on and once that's done click allow peer so it asks you allow extensions at gnome.org to run gnome shell integration and you want to click allow and allow now and everything should be working so you can see here that there's some tabs at the top there's extensions um, adding your own extension and installed extensions if you just click on that you can see all the extensions that have been installed now another way to view your installed extensions is to go into your software center and if you don't have it already, install the GNOME Tweak Tool application. So you can just look up Tweak Tool. And I already have it installed, so if you have it there, you can launch it up. And inside the application, you can go down to Extensions. And here you can view all the same extensions that are shown here. So the first extension on this list is Dash to Panel. Now, this is an extension that will rearrange some of the icons here, or items here in the top bar and it will also bring the dock from the activities menu into the panel so it kind of really integrates everything and x windows users will really love this as it does resemble windows a lot so you can go over and search dash to panel in the extensions.gnome.org website click on dash to panel here and you can just simply slide this slider over to on and click install and you can see here that it instantly applied so we have the clock moved over to the side here our accessibility menu here our menu buttons down here and then the dock is actually moved down here so you can maximize and minimize it it resembles windows a lot for me and if you click this applications menu you get this view right here and one thing that I really like about this extension is that you can customize it a lot so you can just open up the tweak tool go over to the extension and in dash to panel just click the gear icon and you can see that there are just a lot of things that you can customize you can customize the panel size you can customize if you want it at the top or the bottom you can customize behavior fine-tune each of the padding and icons the sizes all that kind of stuff and and yeah there's just a lot of stuff you can do so this is a great extension. I highly recommend installing this. It's one of the first extensions that I put when installing GNOME, as it does make it a lot more usable. So the next extension on the list is called Top Icons Plus. So you can just search up Top Icons, then yeah, there's Top Icons and then Top Icons Plus. Top Icons Plus just basically has more options. So you can click on that, slide it over, and hit install. So what this does is it moves the legacy tray icons back up here to the top of the panel. As you can see in this screenshot right here, 
icons like Dropbox, Skype, and any screen recorders and stuff like that will be up here at the top and you can easily access them. So I don't know why, but GNOME, the GNOME shell just doesn't add them there by default and it really makes it annoying to have to go into the application sometimes to manually adjust them. So if you don't really have anything running in the background, any applications that have legacy Troy icons, you won't see any difference like I do right now. If I turn it on and off, nothing happens. But if you do have applications like Dropbox or something like that, you will definitely see a change and it makes it very much easier to use the GNOME shell. Number three on the list is OpenWeather, and this is an extension that just displays weather information up here at the top, and you can just click on it and view the information for your location. So I'll just slide that over, hit install, and you can see here that it instantly added this little icon here. So let me just click on that. And you can see here that we have our location here, the condition displayed with these nice icons here, the temperature, cloudiness, humidity, pressure, wind, all that kind of stuff. All the information that you're really going to need is there. So I'm going to hit the settings gear and see what kind of things we can change. So we can change the location. So I'll just add a new location. Let's find that. So we can just click on that. Save. And we got our new location here. And we can just move between both of those and it'll have the condition automatically change. We can also uh, change between two different weather providers, Open Weather Map and Dark Sky. And if you want it to work well, you will need a user API key, so just make sure to get that. We also have different geo providers, you can change those. Our units, you can change between Celsius, Kelvin, all this other stuff here. You can change the layout, we can change this to like right, which moves it all the way over here, or to the left, moves it over here, and you can just really change a lot of stuff here. So this is a must if you want to quickly look at your weather without having to go to a separate website. So at about halfway, we have number four on the list, which is sound input and output device chooser. So what this does is it basically adds a set of settings to your menu icons up here and allows you to switch between different output and input devices. So if you have something like a set of speakers and then Bluetooth headphones, you can easily switch between the two without having to go into any settings. So let me turn this on, and you can see up here that we have these four different settings added here. So you can turn the output settings up and down, like the microphone and speakers, and then if you go below that into the selectors, you can change the different input devices. Now if I click on the settings icon here, we have some settings to work with. So you can hide selector if there's only one device, and you can disable audio profile. So if I disable that, you can see that we only have a few options here. But if I turn that on, I can change between all the different surround versions up here. And I can hide either output or input devices or both. I don't know why you do that, but you can do that if you want. And you can change the icon theme. I'll just change that to color and that looks pretty nice. So that was sound input and output device user, and it really does come in handy. So rolling up with number five on the list, we have clipboard indicator. So you can just search up clipboard, click on the extension, and then slide this to on. And you can see at the top that it added a little icon of a clipboard. And when you click on that, it shows you all the different text that you copied. So suppose I copy the URL right here. I get a little notification at the top saying that it copied it to the clipboard, and then when I click on the indicator, you can see that it's right here. Now there's also a little dot next to the text, and that shows that that is currently what is in the clipboard. So if I just, you know, copy something else, just some random text right here, and just control C, you can see that I got the notification, and then when I go back to my indicator, you can see that the little dot is on the text that I just copied. And you can just easily switch between both of your, or any of your clips. So I just click that, and then when I paste it back in here, it adds that. And then suppose I want this again, click that, and paste it back. You can switch between the two. So there's also a private mode in which it won't keep any of your clipboard history. And then there's also an option to clear the history if you don't want anything there, just clear that. And then if you go into settings here, 
we have a few things to um, edit. We can change the history size, so the amount of different clips that will keep in the history. The preview size, which is how much text will be displayed on this one line. Refresh interval, file size, showing the notification, and some keyboard shortcuts. The sixth extension in this video is the Pomodoro Timer. So you can just search out Pomodoro and click on Pomodoro here. And you can see in this little notice here that new versions are no longer distributed through extensions at gnome.org. So you're actually going to have to go to gnomepomodoro.org. They have an official website now. It's that good. And you can scroll down to the download section. So they support all the major distributions. So I'm currently running a Fedora based distribution and you get this nice little menu thing here. So you can select your exact version, click on your exact release. And then I'm running uh, Workstation 25. So I'll just copy this and run it in the terminal. And of course, if you're running something else like Arch Linux or Ubuntu, you can easily run those commands by selecting them here. So it's currently downloading and installing and make sure to hit enter or Y if you get any prompts. And it is done. So now you can just log out of your computer, or not power off, log out, and then log back in. And you can see that it is installed at the top. So you can just click on this new, newly added circle here at the top, and you can just hit play on the Pomodoro timer. So this is a timer that will help to manage your time. And basically it will alert you to take quick breaks and you can either change it between short break or long break. And it supposedly helps with your productivity. So you can also go to preferences and manually select the duration for each of the different times. So you can like set the break duration if you want a longer break, set the Pomodoro duration, which is the work time, and you can just select all those kind of things. You can set the notifications and the different sounds. So this extension definitely does improve your productivity. And I mean, it displays information in a nice way. And if you look up here, you can actually see that is a circle and it does show how much time is remaining as a fraction of the circle. So that's kind of nice. So last but not least, we have the applications menu extension. Now this is actually pre-installed with your GNOME distribution. So you can just open up the GNOME tweak tool and all you have to do is enable it. So go over to extensions and select applications menu. So once you do that, you can see that we now have a drop down on the applications button here. And this is very handy because here you can just select all these different categories and inside them you can select and run the different programs. And I find this sometimes more useful than going over to the overview menu and then searching it from there. And if you want to, you can always go to your activities overview by just clicking that. But to quickly get to an application, this helps a lot better. Now I quickly wanted to show you how you can uninstall an extension. So if you go into your tweak tool, of course you can disable the extension by just unchecking it, click on extensions and then deselect it, but that doesn't really uninstall it. So to uninstall it, you can go over to Firefox and then go to the extensions.gnome or website, click on installed extensions, and make sure you run the integration. And you should see these little X boxes on the extensions that you can uninstall. Suppose I wanted to uninstall the open weather extension, you can just click the X and it will instantly get rid of that. So everyone, that's going to wrap this video. Those were the top 7 GNOME Shell extensions in no particular order. And as I said in the beginning of the video, these extensions will really increase the overall productivity on your computer and just make GNOME a little bit more fun to use. And I really do believe that extensions make GNOME a more friendly and usable desktop environment. So.
make sure to check out some of the other extensions on extensions.gnome.org. There are tons of them available, and you'll definitely have one to meet your needs. So guys, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. Also, please comment down below and tell me what you thought of the video, and also share your favorite Gnome Shell extension. And don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more Gnome Shell videos, and mostly just general Linux videos. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm <laughs> sorry.